35, 30, exactly. 40. Okay. Nice. I've seen it happen many, many times. So, so there are hillside ordinances, density ordinances, and uh, a request for variance is probably Here, here's the list. Right? I'm not, I'm, yeah. Right? Okay. So let's put those three as a variances. In our and I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm not a big tree hugger by any means, but I'm a nature guy. I do like outdoors. You're in the closet tree hugger. He's in the closet tree. So, I mean, there's not many trees to speak of. There's oaks. There's oaks up in there. Yeah, exactly. What about the oaks? The white oak. It's an existing walnut grove. Yeah. So it's like to see any development. They're protected, right? As long, I think I know that they're, they're state protected. Oak trees. But they can be cut, and they have been cut off the sides throughout the area by the yeah. Through a through a very uh, a variance or how did they where were they able to trade. just did yeah, it no oh I see and oak they make trees, a trade with the planning oak commission trees are highly protected I have ten in my backyard nice <laughs> oak, oak trees are highly protected <laughs> um, I don't even prune they can't them. even be moved <laughs> but they do move them so. oak and trees. they they get fired yeah. and it, it's like do they work around them the ones that are the point is good is see that there are rules in place. But the reality is, as we know from the last developer, that people request to go around the rules, and sometimes they're allowed to. Right, yeah, right. And, yeah, and if we if we start to rezone it, okay, let's. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Let's say it's a zone five, five houses, and they want a zone ten, ten houses. I'm just throwing numbers, right? They're not zones. It's hypothetical. Who's to say that we give in to the rezoning of a ten that they don't get it once the paperwork goes through? It's a zone fifteen. You give a little. That's how developers are. They take as much well, once it's rezoned, they do what they want with it. Once it's rezoned, they can yeah, say whatever they want. You can never change it back. Yeah, right, right. They can say 10, but then once rezoned, do what they want. They're not the same trees, and they're generic trees. They're, they're, uh, how would you say, uh, property management friendly trees. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not indigenous trees. Right. They not tolerant. They don't look too pretty, but they're clean. Yeah. Are they real? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the traffic consideration, right? Traffic. I, I just, I don't want to tie any owner's hands. In reality, you shouldn't. But at what point do we face reality to actuality? You know, how far do we let them get away with what? <laughs> I'm to record. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you guys moved in, huh? Yeah. 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 How do you like it? It's good. I mean, you know, it's home. Yeah. Yeah. Does it change things or just restore? Yeah, it, it's, it's different. Will you change something if you lost the last season? Will you change something if you lost there, there was so much we didn't know until the building codes came out. We're like, oh, we're oh, yeah. not permitted, and that's the problem. Uh, <laughs> we're like, wow, well, yeah, it's just permitted. We're climbing to a location in the back wall. Oh, there's the, the, the patio now. The back, yeah. It's minutes on stuff like that, too. Yeah, so that was the other one. Now I'm doing some After seven, should I just kind of begin? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think a few more people might um, come in since I just only said a couple of words. So I just repeat. So my name is Dan Cassell. I'm with Clearwater Communities. We're a home builder, developer, and 
We are a um, supplier of the land of Lombardy and Eastern, five acres, just under five acres. And we uh, appreciate you coming this evening. I've got all things to do, and people are busy and tired, and have all their own stresses and stuff. So I, I do appreciate you coming out to just hear just kind of a brief introduction of some thoughts that we have regarding the property, and that um, we're also here to really listen and to hear what, what people think and you know, get some ideas as we're starting this process. And the process I'm talking about is, is, is kind of going through, uh, uh, well, it really is a process with the city of LA to get you know approvals to do a development. And so part of it is getting input from the neighborhood and understanding you know, what the sensitivities are and working with people. And um, you know, part of it is you know, working with all the different departments to satisfy all the requirements. And part of it is political working with the um, councilman's office. They have staff planners and, and folks, and so you know, interacting with them. So it's kind of a, uh, almost like an orchestra, you know, trying to touch on each of the different elements so that we um, you know, create something that's thoughtful and that's a benefit, creates value for the community. So with that, um, one thing I really wanted to point out is, is, is just to let you all know that I'm very aware of you know, who's a prior developer who owned the land. And I understand that he bought it a number of years ago, I think maybe around 2005. And for an extended period of time, he you know, was planning to try to do a school. And I've heard about that from various different you know, people and the councilman's office and the, and the schools. I've, I've talked to the principals of the uh, Farm Elementary School and the middle school. So I just want to let you know that we have nothing to do with the school. We have nothing to do with the seller of the land, other than he's on one side of the contract and we're on the other. We're a buyer, so we're not associated with them. We're not partnering with them. Uh, we're not, we don't owe them anything. anything. It's just it's a completely separate company, and we really have nothing to do with the school. And I did understand why people in the community were objecting. I understand teacher's position and, and really what was going on. And I think I understand quite a bit about why that was objectionable. And you, you had mentioned, and, and I've heard those items and more, you know. And I actually kind of studied these schools a little bit. And I spent some time at, at um, the elementary school and the middle school, I met with the principals, and I walked the campuses. And I learned a lot, and I became really impressed with what the, um, what's going on at the schools how the kids are doing, and IB program, and our connection with USC, and all the good things that they're doing in humanities and science and everything. Learning is great. And um, in any case, that's really primarily, you know, some of the things that we've looked at and thought about. With regard to um, what we're looking at here is the site being suitable for residential. And so what we've done is created a this is a draft, I would kind of call it a site plan. Now, some of you may not be able to see it. It's really welcome to come up. And I'm not planning to talk endlessly. I really just kind of want to say a few things and then start to get some input. So this is just, again, very preliminary. And it shows single family homes plotted on the site in different areas. And this is kind of like a Google map photo that just sort of superimposed on top of it. So you can see the uh, uh, regional park, how the aspect of those behind it, Carndale Elementary, Eastern, Barney, and then here's the site. And these are the houses that um, are pretty close to what? Harmony Lane and Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many properties are on that drawing? What are the pink and green? There's 43. Okay. And it's about four, like I said, about 4.91 acres. The, this green, well, the green is showing um, flat area in the site. So the, the kind of teal color are two-story houses. The pink or purple are three-story houses. And so basically, on this draft site plan, just a mixture of two and three stories. The number is 43 residents, correct? correct? And how many of which, how many two-story, how many three-story? 
Well, it's, it's all preliminary right now. So right now I think we have 22 two-story, 23 two-story, and 20, 21? You know, I think it's 19. So, if it gets in, yeah. the other side of the You know, with the current zoning, I think the number you're allowed is 6 or 9. If I'm not mistaken. So, if you want to go to 40, then you're going to be asking for uh, variances, probably, from the city? Yeah. Well, that? well the, cur the current zoning, um, on almost the whole site is, is RD6. Uh -huh. What does that mean? So RD6 means residential uh, on, on an acre standpoint, minimum 6,000 foot lots. Uh -huh. And then there's a, a piece of the land, one piece right in here, I think, the exact dimension, that's R1. So it's like this back little corner. So RD6, if you just kind of do the math, you take the acreage, and then convert it into square footage, and then divide by 6,000, you get 35 miles. But the acreage is elevated. So are yeah, you they're... counting the elevation? It's the, yeah, the, way the, the way the city does the calculation is the gross square footage of the site. Okay, see, with my question, I'm a little confused. I was kind of simple mind. But if you're counting grade, the, the grade, yeah. maybe some grade. Okay. You would ask for hillside variances, because it's under a hillside ordinance. Well, yeah, there's actually, um, there's the hillside ordinance, and then there's the northeast hillside ordinance, and so there's, there's building codes, there's a lot of codes, but um, under the, the ordinance, there's certain things that, you know, would govern how you can grade the site and what, you know, what you can do, and there's certain restrictions. But under the northeast ordinance, there's not much you can do other than changing that ordinance. To accommodate this plan, because I remember that north northeast ordinance was pretty restricted on what you can do on a hillside. Correct. Well, what the, um, the the northeast hillside ordinance, which is it's all it's a public document. You can get it off of, you I have it on. Uh, yeah. I have a copy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a link to it somewhere yeah, on a website. It. We know if you want. Yeah. To <laughs> Yeah, I have it right here. Okay. Look at it. I, you yeah. know, it's just yeah. a basic question of yeah. Yeah. Um, what is it zoned for now? Yeah. And with your preliminary proposal, how much of a change? It's a very basic question. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so the zoning right now, like I said, is RD6. Mm. So if you do the math, you can get 35 homes by right on the site. Wow. That's not what I understood. And then again, if it was flat. If it was flat, because you're counting. Um, the, the, uh, I, think the north, I think the northeast ordinance supersedes that party six is what we went through with the previous owner. Yeah, and that's what he wanted to change and get rid of was that it wasn't so much the school is that he needed to rezone and get away from that uh, hillside ordinance. Yeah, you know. We can leave I, them out I, of this if you want. I'm just saying that's what we had to pull through. Yeah. So we've, i got to see what you need to go through. You, get, you said by right, but I think it was a little more complicated than that. Exactly. Well, yeah. The, the, our density by right density. is sort of a term right. that if you just do like a zoning calculation with acreage, right. it, just, it just comes up to a mathematical answer. Right. Okay. If the land was flat. But well, being that it's a hillside, and it falls under the hillside ordinance, you're not allowed to do that. Thank you. Well, right. as we understand, um, it, there's <laughs> just you know, there, yeah. first of all, there's, there's nothing yeah. we're doing that's yeah. that's illegal. No, no. Or, or, or proposing to do something that's right. illegal. Yeah. And we're going to be working within all of the guidelines. Okay. So there's overlapping guidelines, and some of them are, you know. Know, simple to understand because they're objective. Okay. Some of them are a little bit difficult to interpret, you know, because they may conflict or they may you know, pertain to one thing versus another. So, you know, as, as, as an example, the Northeast Hillside Ordinance 
doesn't say your density changes because of the topography. I know you're saying our interpretation of it and what we've been told by the city is that that's not a fact for them because there's topography that's a different population. Now, that being said, there's still other areas of... Hello. Hi. Hi. Come on. Gosh, I'm all right right now. That's all right. You can... Yeah. There's coffee. If you'd like a cup of coffee, I'm welcome to that. There's cake and stuff. Yeah, and I think the big question really is which variance would we be asking for in order to accommodate this population? Oh, that's... Yeah. Well, we don't really know yet, to be honest with you, but there's a couple things on here that would complicate this. I mean, generally, what we want to do is try to comply with everything. I mean, that's our goal. Please, everyone. Well, you know, there's all these rules. The less things we have to ask for, you know, the more direct the cap is. So we're not here to, like, rewrite massive changes to things. And again, it's really absolutely nothing to do with the prior development. So there's a couple things that I do know of that we're contemplating on things with regard to the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. So one has to do with retaining walls. So here's the thing in the Northeast Ordinance rule on retaining walls. What it says is essentially no wall can be over 12 feet high, a single wall. I mean, excuse me, any combination of walls can't total more than 12 feet. And any single wall can't total more than six. So there's a couple of places on the site, and we've only really done preliminary engineering. So the site is not engineered. We are working with a civil engineer and an architect, both of whom are in L.A. And so we do have some engineering to kind of depict what we have here. And so there's an area on the site approximately right here. There's this road that comes up, and that's the natural road on top of here, where the retaining walls might have to be about nine and a half feet tall. So by the ordinance, you couldn't do a nine and a half foot tall wall. You can only do a six foot one, or you could divide the nine and a half in two in some fashion, four and five and a half, whatever. And then, but the total can't be more than 12 feet. So one way to do this is do it a wall, and I think it's most right in here, but there may be a couple of other areas that are not 100 percent yet, because it's fully engineered, where we might be over nine feet but under 12, where we could either A, seek a variance to have a taller than six foot wall, or B, do a two stage wall. You have the wall, and then you might have the slopes, and then there's another wall. So then there's two walls. So you can solve it that way, and that's what we're working on. We don't want to have any variance, but there may be a couple of areas where we might need to ask for one. And if we don't get the variance for some reason, then we would do it with two walls. Just looking at this, right, those properties are awfully close to each other. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, that one side on Lombardi, where you have six. Right, yeah. What's the lot size on those things? The lot is the green area, and actually it could even possibly be further. Well, because you have more houses on that one little purple strip than the amount of houses that are next to it, and those houses are small. Yeah, yeah. No, these are, okay, these ones, these ones here, they're all designed to be detached single family, so they're not touching as attached walls. On this picture, again, it's really draft and preliminary. Some of them look like they're touching, but they are going to be separated by some amount, and they're going to be detached single family, so they're not going to be touching walls. Yeah, but I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, and these are small. These are actual, actual photos. So if you just take this, you're at the site level. So these are already pretty small. Yeah, you're cramming them in, it looks like. Well, what's 
Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the way the way that you get more square footage is to go up. And you also have I think you know in a way if you have a combination of two story and three story architecture, it provides kind of a more interesting look at the community rather than everything is just two story or everything is just well you that's know, kind of a blanket thing. statement, I'm sorry. But uh, I've seen three story homes that you don't want to live in. Okay, just the fact that they're two story doesn't mean they're interesting. <laughs> okay, excuse me. What, uh, but, uh, There's plenty of examples of bad yeah, architecture. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I hear you. Now, uh, I, I hate to kind of just jump forward, but let me ask this question. Are you open to reducing the number of homes that, you, that we see right now to, uh, to the 40, to uh, half that? Six. For what? Well, legal. <laughs> legal <laughs> For the consideration six. of density, uh, uh, traffic, Aesthetics. All these other concerns that we're bringing up. What I'm going to do, and I know that it's my any suggestions, but what I'm going to do is, is write them down. Yeah. yeah. So that. So, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't profess to have a great memory. Okay. So, I, I, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to just Absolutely. write just all the ideas down that, 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 that we should write down. So at least we have. You can quote me. <laughs> the, uh, You're on camera. So, yes, <laughs> and, and the request was. No, are you open to consider half the property from 40 to 20, or whatever the number is? Last time. We're here because they're going to build, I want to know if they're going to build apartments to rental. Are they going to be rentals or are they going to sell the houses? Oh, I can answer that. Are you going to sell the houses or are you going to rent them? For sale. For sale. Okay, well that, that makes it a little better because they're going to be rental. I'm against it. Right. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Let me bring up another thing that we just just well, it out. For rentals, I'm against it. If, if, if they're going to be for sale for people to yeah. buy them, well, then I don't have a problem with that because they're probably going to take care of their homes. That's right. When you rent them, people <laughs> tend not to take care of them. So that creates a problem. Yeah. A big problem. Yeah. Because I heard that we're going to make apartments. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Oh, yeah. That was... That was, to me, that's... That's not, not accurate. That's not even... Any other came from us, and, and that's why we're having this because I know that a lot of people who are concerned with being school is this and that. So it's not apartments. We never thought of apartments. We're not apartment builder. Um, these would be detached single family homes. They would be for sale. People would buy them. The other thing is, one of the things with, with the density, just, just as the, the ordinance in the city of LA is called the small lot ordinance that you know, I'm sure they have a lot of you know about, was created by the city, and it's in a lot of other cities, in San Diego and others. So the purpose of the small lot ordinance, as I understand it, is to allow greater density without going to condominium ownership. Okay? So by doing that, you end up having higher property values. You end up with, where you don't have lender issues. There's lender issues on the, on the buyer side if, if it's a condo. Condos tend to drop in value faster in a downturn. They tend to not go up as high as single family homes in an upturn. And just in general, more people prefer to do that single family home. So with non-condo ownership, it's fee simple, meaning you own the house and the land underneath it, just like you know, on any other house. The benefit is you can you know, work to get some amount of higher density without doing condos, because those kind of densities can be you know, a lot more intense, which is not all we're talking about. This density that we just mapped right, we're just under five acres. Four point nine one acres. Maybe you have forty three, and that is less than ten per acre. So I, I know respectfully then. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's more on the No. Um okay, so let me let me try to do another clarification. I understand what you're saying. There's I was confused about this. When I first started, you know, 20 something years ago, townhome is, is actually not a legal term. Townhome is an architectural description. And townhome is something, I think, probably what you're starting to describe. Three story, have a garage down below. Okay. 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 
So these are not townhouses. These are detached, single-family residents. Condominium ownership is, is different. Where you have, a, let, let's say if there were, yeah, you just have an interest. However many units, there's 50, you have one fiftieth of an interest in the whole site, and then you own up what's inside, and you know, there's homeowner association and stuff like that. So this is not that. This, what, we're, what we're talking about are detached single family homes, home ownership where you get you know, conventional mortgage. Uh, How big are these homes going to be? Well, these ones, basically the footprints that we're showing would reflect homes that are you know, kind of like the higher teens that are easily up to maybe a little bit over 2,000 square feet. 43 is on this plan. Excellent question. We met with sanitation, and one of the requirements is that their trucks, you like, you have to go and talk to them, and when they live on the roads, their trucks have to be able to come up. Well, actually, we don't have to. Hillside side there is exemption. We didn't want that. We wanted the, the, the um, sanitation trucks to drive in everywhere and pick up with the mechanical arm the city of LA trucks. So this would be all public, and people would have room to put their trash cans, and they would get picked up at everyone's home. Uh -huh. Great question. One of the things that occurs with the smaller ordinance is you can do the term that, that I was sort of called this cluster. You can't see this at all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So so clustering allows you to kind of you got your hand up for a while. Let me answer yeah. this question on clustering and then come right to you. Thank you. Uh, okay. If and when you get a group, <laughs> maybe a beer or a food. How much do you project these houses, single home family, to sell for? You know, it's hard, like out in the future. Mm -hmm. But you I would say, some projection. yeah, I, I, I would think because there's houses that are like nine or eleven or twelve hundred square feet that have been fixed up by house flippers in El Sereno now, like on Klamath, that sold in the high three hundreds recently. So I would think these new, being certainly more square footage, most of these are going to have views. Um, I would think they're going to be like in the high 400s into the 500s, but that leaves a half a million. Something in that realm. I mean, if you look at the price per square foot, <laughs> what's going on today? Uh, yeah. You know, really, it's. I, I don't want to be a base of it all, but the, you know, the market's going to dictate what you can sell the homes for. So we don't know where the future is going to be. Yeah, in that range, so. Well, if the market is flat, flat yeah. or if it goes down, I mean, you know, that's a, a risk. But you're betting against it. If you have a way to predict, let me know. Right? <laughs> I'm going to ask another question. You said there's how many acres here? What? How many acres do you got here? It's about, about 4.91 acres. And you're going to put up how many homes? 43. That's a whole lot of homes for a little, uh, for that, a little bit of land. <laughs> well, let me see. Uh, 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 what are they, you saying? So the stuff right here. <laughs> Correct. So how much room are they going to have between each other? Well, you can see the photo there. You know, on, this, this, again, this is rough. I mean, some houses <laughs> will have more space. Some would have less space. But they would be completely separate from each other. On average, 2,000 square feet. 19. Okay. I'm going to average up a little bit lower than 2,000 square feet. On two to three floors. On two, either, both of them. One, one thing, if you, if you look, I, I don't know if you can tell this, and I know it's not going to get dark, but these kind of turquoise ones, if you kind of look at the size, yeah, things are the size of that. This is a smaller footprint. Anyway, so three stories. Yeah. And if you got three, you can get a little more square foot. Now, Just give me the weight. The, the, the lots are, they, they well, you know, it depends where the lot lines get drawn. And I don't mean to be vague, but, but the lots could be like somewhere around two or 3,000 square feet. Oh, well, yeah, there's you only one of the problem up on the clustering. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So, so the, for the clustering, rather than like the way you might see a subdivision somewhere where they just, you know, kind of create a flat and then they create a grid-like street. And there's plenty of streets all over LA that are like that. You can go on all parts, the valley, and all of them. And then there was this, well, just that, just that, it, just that, that kind of zoning exists, and that, that happens out there.
And there's different lot sizes. Yeah. You'll see 5,000 foot lots, very typical, and larger lots. So what the small lot ordinance allows is that you can cluster and you can, instead of doing a massive amount of grading, you can do less grading and not build in areas that would require more. And so you do overall less grading. And one of the things we're doing here is we're really working with the topography. So I'm sure everybody's aware, the center of the site kind of comes up in a bump right here. Mm -hmm. And then there's this part. There's currently a road that kind of comes in here and it comes to this flat area. And now I was in here back then, and some people, I think that was kind of different uh, versions of what was here before. I think there was a triplex up here. Two homes. Two homes. Two homes. Two homes. Yeah. A fraternity. Yeah, or a fraternity. Fraternity. It a fraternity. It was a fraternity and one other house, and that was it. Okay. That's why there's two roads. Because I live across the years on Lombardi, right there across the years. Six houses, no part of it down with it. Yeah, I'm right, right in the corner of Lombardi and uh, the court is next door. So I'm looking at your six house? houses. Yeah. yeah, I'm right in the corner of the yellow house. This one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this yeah. one? Yeah, I'm on Lombardi and Kels. That's that one? To the left. Keep going. Okay, I'm just across from your sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's right there. Take my word. <laughs> One went to the fraternity, which they never use as a multi use later. Okay, okay, that's what I heard okay. that was multi use. We've lived across that house with the businesses on that lower part, so we've over 50 okay. years. And the other house was a really nice house that got burned down years ago, and no one ever built it. So that's why there's the two roads that go right. up. And right. the bottom part down there was a chicken place and two other. Yeah. It was commercial. No. Oh, over here. Yeah, yeah that's why there's all the walls are there. Oh, yeah. Okay, my my issue, since I live across from there yeah. and the schools are there, is the traffic. Yeah. From 8 to 9 o'clock, you can't get out of the driveway because there's only one lane into Lombardi from Eastern and two lanes going out onto Eastern, one to the north where, and one to the south. Where does it pick the pictures from here, you from the left? Yeah, there, it go, there's three, okay, three lanes. Right one here. lane goes to one the left. One lane coming this way? And then right about here, it's two okay. lanes. One to make a left and one to make a right. Okay, right. Okay. So that center lane, we make the left turn, that backs all the way up. Yes, it Because it's, it's, it's really it. supposed to be like a, a turn lane. Okay. Okay, so from eight to nine, no, from seven to eight, we can back out of the driveway. So if you're going to put six houses there, they're going to have issues because they won't be able to get out of the